I'm about to connect 800 watts of solar panels to this portable power station whose solar input rating is 600 watts. This is called over paneling. And before we over panel, not one, but two different power stations I own, we have to talk about how I over panel safely so that I don't damage my expensive power stations. So just to start, I'm plugging a 100 watt panel into this small power station, which I know I can do safely because the solar panel specs are within all the power stations, solar input ratings of voltage, current, and wattage. But because I know most power stations can be over paneled, the question becomes which of these ratings can I exceed safely? Well, for starters, voltage is a hard limit. The voltage range refers to the solar array open circuit voltage which should always remain within that limit. So if I was to wire these two panels in series, it would sum their voltages, which I can find on the back label where it says open circuit voltage. The bigger panel has a VOC of 24.3 and the smaller one has a VOC of 21.5. So we should get something around 44, 45 volts. Look at that. So wiring these two panels in series definitely exceeds this power station's 30 volt input limit. You should also account for temperature when you're calculating your solar array's maximum open circuit voltage. So I'll put a link in the description to this calculator. It's uh, on my site and it's free to use and it helps you do that. Regardless, we cannot over panel this power station by wiring these two panels in series. So yes, voltage is a hard limit we cannot exceed, but that brings me to a power station's current and wattage ratings. Exceeding these is the basis of over paneling because they are usually not hard limits. I won't say they're always not hard limits because there are so many power stations out there and it's really hard to make a blanket statement like that. But in order to exceed them safely, we need to do some due diligence. The whole purpose of this due diligence is to find out how much we can exceed the power station's stated current and or wattage limits by, if at all. You might think to start by looking in the product manual or online just to see what other people's experiences have been, but I highly recommend you go directly to the source and email the brand. I reached out to a few different brands for this video and we'll hear from one of them in just a sec. And we'll also see how sometimes the brands themselves are not even that clear. Let's start with EcoFlow since that's the brand of power station we are trying to over panel. When I reached out asking if the stated current and or wattage limits can be exceeded, customer support got back to me saying that you cannot exceed 20% of the upper limit. I had to follow up and they specified that was referring to the upper current limit. So if I'm understanding them correctly, we can exceed the eight amp current limit by 20%, which would put, let's call it the over paneled current limit. I'm just making that term up at 9.6 amps. In another email, they did imply that this was referring to the short circuit current. So for this power station, I'll try to keep my solar arrays short circuit current below 9.6 amps, but frankly, customer support was not very clear. And if you're wondering what the eight amp rating even refers to, then it's usually the max current that the power station will accept. So if my panels were capable of producing, let's say 8.5 amps of current, for instance, then the power station would limit the current to just eight amps. And we'll see an example of this later on. That all being said, for me in this case, I do feel comfortable over paneling this slightly while staying within that 9.6 amp short circuit current limit from my solar panels. And if you're like, what the heck does that mean? Well, solar panels also have a short circuit current rating on the back label. And when you wire solar panels in parallel, like I've just done using a pair of MC4 branch connectors, then it sums their currents. And normally the voltage would stay the same if you're using identical solar panels. But because I'm using different solar panels, the open circuit voltage of the array becomes that of the lowest rated panel, which in this case is the 21.5 volts from this smaller panel. So this array has a short circuit current of 8.16 amps, which is above the stated current rating, but it's actually below that over paneled current rating that the customer support told us about. And it has a VOC of 21.5, which is within the 30 volt limit. So let's plug it in and see what happens. I had to move it into the shade to see it a little better, but it is maxing out at a charging rate of 94 watts. There's a little shade from this panel on that panel, so I'm gonna move it. Getting a max of 99 watts. We're not getting the full 150 watts. Obviously, solar panels rarely output their rated power, but don't forget, because these are different solar panels wired in parallel, we're actually not gonna get the 150 watts max because this uh, solar panel's VOC is pulling down the voltage of the entire array. But still we're getting 99 watts, which is a lot more than we'd be getting if we were just using the one 100 watt panel. So we are getting faster solar charging. That's the benefit of over paneling. 
I actually quickly want to check what we'd get from just the one panel, so I'm going to disconnect these. 69 watts from the 100 watt panel by itself. So an extra 30 watts from adding the 50 watt panel, which is pretty good. So we've covered voltage and current, but what about wattage? Most times the wattage limit refers to the max amount of watts that the power station will ever pull from the solar array that's connected to it. So even if my 150 watt solar array was capable of producing, let's say 130 watts in really good conditions, then the max amount that my River 2 would accept would be 110 watts. And this is called clipping, and we'll see an example of this later on. Blue Eddy is one of the brands I reached out to for this video, and they confirmed that that's how their power station's wattage ratings work. It's basically a max amount that the unit will ever pull. So they said an example of, let's say a unit has a 200 watt solar input limit, and you connect a solar panel that can output 500 watts, uh, the unit will only accept 200 watts, and the extra 300 watts will be clipped. Okay, so we've talked about how to approach overpaneling in a safe way, but before we overpanel this bigger power station here, what happens if we do it with this one in a risky way? You might run into some examples of people doing this online, so I'm going to connect 200 watts of solar to mine, and we are going to see what happens. All right, connected it. Okay, it has settled around 109 watts. So probably it's at that, there it is, that 110 watt input limit. And now we're seeing clipping happening where the power station is actually only accepting a max of 110 watts, despite the array's ability to output more. But look at that. This, this uh, solar array right here uh, has a short circuit current of close to 10 amps. And despite going over that you know 9.6 amp limit that customer support told me about, we are having no issues. Personally, my thoughts are this is a bit risky. You know, you don't know. It might work in the short term, but in the long term, it could potentially damage your power station. Uh, so I'm not gonna be doing this that much longer, but just wanted to show you that in some cases, this might be possible. The 200 watt array has been connected for about five minutes and no issue. I'm gonna unplug it now. And I'm getting everything ready to connect the 800 watts to the bigger power station. All eight panels are now wired together. I had to wire two in series and then four series strings in parallel. That required I use some four to one branch connectors as well as MC4 inline fuses. And yes, these are of course different solar panels. So I had to do the math and wire them in such way as to minimize power losses. By my calculations, I'm gonna get around 700 watts of max potential power from these 800 watts of solar panels. And because that's so much current, I had to size my wires appropriately and I had to swap out my uh, solar adapter cable for a thicker one. For fun, I also added this PV disconnect switch and a watt meter. So let's first check what open circuit voltage we're getting on the watt meter. It says around 41 volts VOC. VOC, open circuit voltage, because this is not yet connected to the power station. And before I even decided to overpanel this power station, I had to do my due diligence, so I reached out to Anchor and they said, yes, this uh, power station, the C1000, can indeed be overpaneled. And the output power and current of these solar panels are constrained by what they call the power processing system. So that all being said, let's go ahead and connect the solar panels. I'm just disconnecting the switch first so that I can connect them by turning the switch. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in the uh, solar uh, adapter cable into the charging port on my power station. There it goes but this switch is off, so it's not yet connected. Let me just get that situated. And now for the moment of truth, let's start the solar charging. Okay. There it goes, starting to trickle in. And look at that, it's settling around at only 420 watts. Interesting, so if we look at the power meter, we see that the voltage of the solar array is 33.6 volts 
and the amperage is 12.58. 12.5 is an important figure because that's the current limit of this power station. So what the power meter is showing us is that this solar array I've set up here is pretty suboptimal uh, for use with that power station because I'm really not taking advantage of the 60 volt limit. And because of the way I've wired them, it's producing a lot of current, but a lot of that is getting clipped by the power station since 12.5 amps is the limit. So I've kind of run into another issue of over paneling, which is that you have to have a good wiring configuration to take advantage of the solar charging limits of your power station. Otherwise you could have a lot of clipping like I'm having right now, and you could only get 400 watts of output from 800 watts of solar panels. So if I wanted to take full advantage of this power station's 600 watt solar charging limit, then I would have to buy new solar panels that I could string together to form an array that has a higher open circuit voltage still within that 60 volt limit adjusted for temperature. But that would require quite a bit of work that I'm frankly not willing to put in my time or money to do. So I'm just gonna let this array charge my power station for a while and see how much energy we get. Here comes the shade. After one hour, the solar panels charge the power station from 22% to 37%. That's not that much, obviously. The shade came in pretty quickly after I plugged in the solar panels. Regardless, I think the two examples of overpaneling that we looked at in this video demonstrate the potential it has for faster solar charging, but also the challenges that come along with it and how you have to do it right in order to take full advantage. Subscribe for more beginner-friendly videos on solar power, and I'll see you in the next one.